Today I'm joined by Adam Pipe, Vim Lark, and John Jackson. The art kit we'll be using is the Micro Roguelite Kit by Kenny. To recap the rules, we each have 48 hours to make a game, and those hours don't have to be consecutive. We can use any public domain sound effects and music, or make our own, and we must use the art kit for our game's visuals, though we're free to be creative in how we use it. Let's begin. So for this jam, I want us to do two things. First of all, I had been thinking lately of this idea for a game where the foreground is a 2D platformer and the background is a first person game. I never made it before because I thought it would be too confusing, but I decided that I wanted to give it a try anyways. Secondly, I really wanted to make this game have an interesting art style. I always believe that no matter how hard you suck at art, you can always make your game look good if you throw enough post-processing filters on it. When I start out with a project, I always start out with the art before writing any code. I do this because I really can't work on something that just looks bad and I feel like it's easier to write for something if you know how it'll look in the final product. So I did a small art test with a filter that clamps the screen colors to a palette. Then I started out with the first person aspect of the game by meticulously crafting a detailed maze using expensive 3D software. Not really, I threw some planes together to make a box and made go to kind of like automatically hide the walls where they shouldn't be. Early on I noticed that the first person was never gonna look good because the sprites were too low resolution, so I went for a third person approach instead. After this I moved on to the 2D part of the game. I'm always very careful to maintain a clean code base, so the first thing I did was import some shitty platformer code I wrote six months ago. I cleaned it up just enough to make it work and apply the sprites, and now I had a little funny wet guy who could jump. After setting up some camera magic, I was able to overlay the 2D part over the 3D part. So then I added the main mechanic of the game, where if you were on the edge of the screen, you would control the 3D game in the back. Uh, the red looked very bad, so I stole some shader from the internet, which made the foreground in vertical colors from the background. This was really confusing for a lot of people, so I wrote a short story about a 2D guy who was really depressed living in a 2D space, um, and then he started dreaming about a 3D space. This way the mechanic would be slowly introduced so it wouldn't be too much for the player at once. Eventually he gets stuck in the dream and then it's kind of like a horror type game. Alright, we're playing Meta Maze. Oh, look at him move! I love the little trail behind him. Nice audio. Cool animation. So what's that? There's some weird effect that appears when I jump up. Oh, okay. So I guess that determines which direction I'm moving. Put something that way. Life in the 2D plane is flat and boring. Oh, uh, looks like it's going to be a 3D game. It all feels so directionless. There's no point to the running, the jumping, the falling. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to land this jump now that, uh... <laughs> Sometimes at night I have strange dreams. Dreams of other directions, not just left and right, but also forward and backwards. Oops. Okay, I like, I'm glad you respond super quickly. It feels so unnatural. Even just walking is difficult in this dream. Yet still, the alien world fascinates me. In this dream, I'm walking through a maze. And there's always something at the end. But as soon as I touch it, I wake up. Okay, we're pushing. I do wish the camera pushed a little bit sooner, though. If I could make one suggestion, it would be wait until the player is on the ground to start these text boxes. If only I could get another glimpse at this life. Perhaps maybe if I stood still for a second, I held my breath and closed my eyes. Alright, let's stand still for a second. Ooh, what's going on? I think this might be the end of my playthrough of this, because I don't know what else to do. So, I guess I'll email and see if there's any more, but, uh... Oh! Wait, where the... What? Wow. Okay. That's fantastic. I was wondering what the borders are for. Um, jeez. There we go. I almost left before it got good. That is a really cool effect. This is a really interesting idea. Keeping the player as the platformer while you control this, that was not what I was expecting. Which is really cool. A bit creepy as well. I like the ambience. If I have to fight anything in here, I'm I'm screwed. <laughs> the movement's already difficult enough. I wonder if this level wraps or something, or if there's an end to the 2D level. Is there something chasing me? I hear something. Oh, I'm probably supposed to go towards the noise. There it is. There's something up there, right? Yeah. Oh, you don't look friendly at all, do you? No, you don't. 
Oh, maybe that's where I'm supposed to go. I guess. Well, it's the only place to go, so... Here goes nothing. Hey! I think we're supposed to do that. I don't think we died. Oh! <gasps> Story more! Yeah! What is this strange feeling? I feel like I'm no longer dreaming. So now it's just a... Complete the maze. Wow, this is awesome. Yes, this feels amazing. I can go anywhere I please in any dimension I wish. But we can't jump, so... Technically, it's still 2D for us. My dreams have finally come true, or am I still dreaming? Wait, this is wrong. I keep walking, but it doesn't lead me anywhere. It doesn't seem to be an exit to this maze. <laughs> Maybe that's a clue. There's no way to... There's no way out. Let's see. He's able to jump so frequently, or so freely, and move so quickly. He's perfectly content with my 2D existence. No, I wasn't. I was complaining. This is a little existential. I feel like these walls are closing in on me. This is nauseating. What have I done? This is no dream. This is a nightmare. Did it end? I guess that's the end? Alright, well, I, I guess that's the end. I wasn't able to find anything else. That was really cool. Really clever and creative and, like, spooky. Hey there, how's it going? I'm Nick. I make games, YouTube videos, and stream under the name Vimlark. When I first got the art kit, I have to admit I was a bit underwhelmed. I like the Kenny packs, but this one just didn't have much that called out to me. My plan from the start was to try and use the art kit in an unexpected way, and I didn't really see much that I could do other than a top-down game. But after some playing around, I made a table into a skateboard and thought it was pretty cute, funny, and of course, unexpected. So I spent a couple streams working on getting the idea functioning. It was looking pretty good until I went to translate the rest of the art into the level. And that's when I realized, this isn't gonna work. The gameplay was fun, but the art was going to look terrible and be more of a pain than it's worth. So about 15 hours in, I chose to start over with an idea that would work better with this art pack. In order to do something that was still a bit unexpected, I went for a platforming game in a top-down perspective. I've made my fair share of platformers, as well as a lot of top-down games, but I've never intentionally tried to do them both at the same time. I started by getting a player in and moving. I added a top and extended the walls to create buildings with elevation changes. Rooms the player could enter were planned, but had to be cut for time and simplicity. Okay, the player can walk up and down levels, now I had to make the player jump. It was just a quick animation and scale change, and it really has a fun effect, I have to say. So now we could walk and jump, but what's a game about running and jumping without the ability to run? And to add in a little bit extra challenge, I added a stamina bar. Walking and running are animated with a simple rotate and sign behavior, and it's super adorable. I also threw in some particles on the ground to just give it that little bit extra. I used the bonfire sprite as the player's checkpoint because Dark Souls. Most gamers will understand it quickly without need for an explanation. And even if a player doesn't get the reference, they'll get it pretty quickly once they fall. Collectible coins came next to give the player a reason to make different and more difficult jumps and explore a little bit. Finally, we needed an enemy, so I pulled the rat first from the pack with the intention of using the other sprites later. I added in a quick death animation and effect when the player touches the rats or falls into the water, and then I added in sound effects and music. Then with all the pieces finally put together, I began level design. This took me way longer than I had planned, and by the end, I had about an hour and a half left. So I quickly slapped together a menu, if you can call it that, and did a few test runs to look for bugs. As always when competing in a game jam, I wish I had more time. But in the end, I think the game is actually pretty fun and looks pretty cool. I hope you all enjoy. Oh, rats. Um, play. Yes. This doesn't work. This is oh, it's L keys. Okay, jump space. Huh. So we have kind of jump. All right, I really like the movement. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Yeah, and the particle effects are cool too. Man, and I like the um, I really like the height difference that you get with the levels. It's very cool. Very cool isometric. See, can I go in the water? Nice. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> okay, so there's some platforming a bit. Level one out of eight. Can I jump up? No, I don't know what the green bar at the bottom means. Okay. Oh, I'm guessing that's checkpoint. Dash. Okay, we run faster. Maybe it gives you a... Okay, better run up. Okay, that's the end portal. I use that portal too. I like that you can step down as well. Ooh, coin. Can I kill the guys with my dash? No. <laughs> my god, I love the animations though. 
Ooh, I hope I can buy something with the coins later on and I'm not collecting them for like no reason at all. Ooh. Oh, okay, so you can actually jump much farther when you dash. Okay. Man, this this is a big level right here. I almost feel like a, uh, a speed run in this game. Would be kind of fun. Man, the camera movement's very satisfying. Good job on that. I see what I need to do. I play video games. All right. I feel like the jump controls need to be a little tighter. Like, typically, if you're falling in a platformer and you hit jump, like a couple frames after you leave the ledge, you should still be able to jump just to like give a little bit of a buffer. It makes the feet uh, feel a little more comfortable. So it seems like I'm just supposed to charge through the middle here. Okay. Oh, I see. For the jump, you just flip the arms. And you got a stamina bar at the bottom that kind of like refills quick, but it also kind of discourages you from running too much. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, I hate these fucking ads, man. Almost at the end of the level, I think, maybe. Actually, no way to know, but, you know, man can do it. How are you supposed to get through these? All right, give me a checkpoint. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. That's eh, not too bad. 426 out of 460. Yeah. Cool. Cool game. All right, so I knew that I wanted to make kind of like a zombie game. So the first thing that I got started was, uh, you saw the movement there for a little bit. Um, getting the map loaded and then started working on some of the the shooting logic as well and the shooting logic would work to where you basically shoot wherever the mouse is and after a little bit getting the the bullets to be smaller and then had more of a steady stream just kind of working on the shooting a little more just making sure that it feels good and that it works nice uh, you can also see that the collisions are actually working now so that they're actually interacting with the walls not yet with uh, any of the npcs but starting out with the walls first so all the maps are going to be loaded just via text files. So I have a couple of different maps that I created. Here we have all the maps being loaded and then some of the logic with the NPCs actually working. So they're colliding with the walls. Um, the zombies are then able to attack. Here's some more footage of the zombies now working. So you have a bunch of different civilians that are just randomly placed on a map. You start out with a couple of zombies. They move towards the blue civilians, turn those into zombies, and then you could touch the civilians to make them into allies. And then it's kind of a shooting game. And finally, we have some UI that's added to the game, so we can display all of our different metrics like health, number of zombies and civilians. The game will have different waves, so the very first level will be collecting as many allies as you can. And then after that, you'll have a series of waves, one after another, that you have to get through and last as long as you can. Various pickups will give you different powers, and you can use those to help you throughout the game. Cthulhu Swims. Rules. Oh, that's a lot of rules. Play. Okay, so I want to touch as many of these guys as I can to battle the zombie wave. Although I'm a little scared to shoot now, because apparently that's when all hell breaks loose. Okay. Oh wow, you weren't kidding. Okay. Oh god. Oh fuck. Um. Uh, can you? Okay. Just going to kill the boys. Shame it doesn't have any sound, but uh. So it seems like the first thing I want to do is get over to the zombie so I can kind of create a barrier. And if I fire. There we go. Oh man, all hell does break loose. Look at them go, they're going crazy! Oh, that's a lot of zombies. All right, I think we're actually doing kind of okay. Let's see, I got some health there. Come on, team! We can do this! We can do this! Yeah! Okay, so you're supposed to make like a, a huge row of allies. Oh, I can just hold the shoot button. That helps. Oh, I can no longer hold the shoot button. Is it just like an arrow or something? There it goes. Yeah. Yo, okay. Kill them all. Oh, oh, okay, so it's an upgrade. Okay, I get it. Oh, and I lost my attack upgrade. I don't know what that upgrade was. Definitely needed that shooty upgrade. All right, I died. Got to leave eight, not bad. Let's see how high I can get. I like the element of strategy. It's like really good because you want to get as many units as you can built up and turn them all into um, allies right before you start shooting and change how the game's going to play, right? Are the greens taking out the allies? Like, do they not fight back? Okay, so you have to shoot for them to fight back, it seems like. 
like me, fight with me, all of that jazz. All right, I'm 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 sacrificing the top left. Top left, you're gone. Ooh, I got extra allies in here. You guys, you're my friends now. You're my friend. Oh, what? How did you become a zombie? Ooh, oh, I wanted that. I just wish I was fast enough to catch, uh, to actually get to some of these power-ups. Because some of them I just, I don't think it's actually possible for me to get to in time. Yeah, like those ones, I, I was no way I was getting to them. This is like the game of life. No, it's not really like the game of life, but it could have, could have been like the game of life. Pathetic. I guess that's my final score. Pathetic. Okay, cool game. That looks like a giant snake. I made snake controls. I added sheep that run away from you, they move at half your speed, and if you eat them, you get longer. There wasn't a sheep sprite though, so I cropped this wolf sprite from the black and white set, a chunk of its mouth from the colored set, a chunk of this rat sprite, and merged them together. Next, I added orcs and villagers that you can eat. The orcs chase the villagers using A star pathfinding, and the villagers run away from them using the same logic as the sheep. The orcs move at half your speed, and the villagers at one third. Finally, I added orc archers. They shoot arrows that move at the same speed as you and kill you if they hit your head, but you can block them with your body. They're there are bow and arrow sprites in the kit, but they're rotated the wrong way, so I made my own using this treasure chest for the bow and this ladder wall combo for the arrow. I made a portal that will take you to the next level, and it spawns particles when it first appears to make sure the player notices it. The portal appears after a goal is met, such as eating all the sheep or killing all the orcs, and you lose levels if you die or all the villagers are killed. I put together a small story about you being a snake spirit that the villagers worship, and you have to protect them from the invading orcs. For the final level, you invade the orc camp and have to kill them all without letting any escape. I didn't want to write any more code so I just put an invisible villager at the exit so all the orcs will run towards it and if they kill it you lose because all the villagers died. And then I just modified the lose message to say orcs escaped instead of villagers died. The last thing I did was add a stat screen at the end of the game that shows how well you did in terms of sheep eaten and villagers saved and it assigns you a grade accordingly. Ooh, I already love the music. Alright, snake-like. Arrow keys to move, space to move faster, enter to start. Villagers have left an offering for you. So it looks like we got a snake game. We gotta eat the chickens. Or sheep. Hello, offering. <laughs> that squish. It also makes you long. Oh my god. And there's the portal. Sweet. So I guess this takes us next level. Yeah, cool. And we got some more dog sheep. Got him. Cool. Alright, that one went a lot better than previous level. Oh, set invading. Okay. Save the villages. Oh, oh, okay, so. Okay, I need to do god stuff as well. Give them good prosperity and, and stuff like that. Oh my god. Oh, I gotta try and get inside the buildings too? No, get back here. Do not get her. Ah, I gotcha. Your giant snake has uh, accepted its offerings, it's defeated the orcs, and now I'm leaving. I'm sorry for those I didn't save. How many can you save? Um, probably none of them. Maybe you should have made you should have made like a courthouse where you you know with all the doors open and you know you're just asking to be ambushed here. Oh no, all villagers dead. Oof. I, I am not a good deity here. Okay. I'm gonna rope them off. Man, this is tough, man. So if we block them off, they can only get in from one direction. Uh, I didn't save a lot of the villagers, but I've also lost. Okay. Dang it. Oh. And God, I'm really bad at this. Jeez, man, you made this hard. <laughs> no! no! Oh my God! Shit. Okay. All right, I think I'm done. Man, that's tough. I think I could do this all day, and I still wouldn't beat it. Don't kill them all. I saved one, and that's all that matters. Hey, four whole villages. The orcs, tra uh, orcs tracks led this way. Oh no, don't let the arrows hit my head. Oh, okay, so I can do this and get past it. Okay. So it'll hurt the body, but not my head. Just gonna rush for it. Okay, taking it slow. Oh my god, how, how? Oh, it's very specific. And this music is not making me patient. Okay, I got a I got a wedding pattern here. Yeah! Oh my god, I did it. Will this just block all the arrows? Oh. That works for me. I don't know if this is cheese, but I'm taking it. Oh, that's satisfying. Take that, orcs. 
Orc encampment. Don't let a single one escape. I think I'm letting multiple ones escape. Yes. Where is your gold now? God, this is the most engaging game I've played in a long time. How, how is this so engaging? I don't understand. It's just the music. It must be the music. No, just kidding. It's also just a really good game. But okay, I have a, I have a technique, a winning strategy, as one would say. How did an orc escape here? Am I an orc? <gasps> is that a plot twist? I am the orc all along. Oh my god. Okay, now I need to go above that. Okay, now I'm safe. And my tail should be gone. Perfect. Just don't screw up the end. That's all I need to do, is not screw up getting to the finish. Hey, hey, the village is saved. The snake spirit returns to the forest. Village is saved. 12. Gates. F. Wow, you suck. <sighs> Your game is just too hard, man. Okay, I don't suck. I am I am at least average at this game. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Adam Pipe, Vimlark, and John Jackson for joining. Be sure to check out their channels linked in the description, and if you want to play any of the games we made, they'll be linked in the description as well. If you'd like to support the channel, check out my game Deus Thou. It's a top-down shooter where you have telekinetic abilities, and I just released a major update with a bunch of new content for it. You can get it on Steam and Itch.io, though I do get more money if you buy it on Itch.